Gretzky, number 99 of the Edmonton Oilers, the greatest scorer in the history of the National Hockey League. Seven seasons, six scoring championships. His first year, he tied for the league. The NHL's most valuable player seven times. A record in seven seasons. The most exciting player in the game. He's got it, the Gretzky's got the open net. Wayne Gretzky has been a national celebrity since he was 10, the year he scored 378 goals. Today, he's an international celebrity, one of the best-known athletes in the world. He's always loved playing hockey. He's always played cleanly and creatively. He plays with intelligence, imagination, and daring. He still plays the way he did when he was a boy growing up, when his love affair with hockey was starting. He has the same enthusiasm. It's still fun. Wayne Gretzky has all the skills. Making a good night. There's Gretzky with six points. Look at him. Hang on to that puck. He can skate. He can stick handle. He can pass. He can shoot. What makes him unique is his sense of the game, his anticipation. He seems to know what's going to happen. Watch the sweaters he draws to a one. You can see two. Right there, there's a third one right over beside him, too. Hockey is geometry. Geometry at its most challenging. Constantly shifting angles and forces. Gretzky seems to understand that geometry better than any player in memory. Some of Wayne Gretzky's talents may be natural and instinctive, but many of them are simple fundamentals, practiced until they become instincts and an art. Welcome to Hockey My Way. You know, hockey's a great game. And in this rink, I've had a lot of fun times. Hockey's fun to play, it's fun to watch, and it's a lot of fun to learn. So over the next hour, we're going to go over some things and learn some basics about hockey. And by the way, this is my brother Brent. He's going to help out and have some fun. Come on in. Before we go on the ice, let's make sure we're properly dressed. As hockey players, we're all very fussy, but two things we have in common. We like to feel comfortable, and we like to be well protected. So let's get dressed and go out and play. I wear long underwear under my equipment because my equipment feels more comfortable that way. Next comes my protective cup. Then my garter belt to hold up my stockings. And the stockings, of course, hold your shin guards in place. Make sure all your equipment fits, and kids, wear the lightest equipment that will give you the protection you need. Your shin guards should come right down to the top of your skates. And make sure they do a good job of protecting your knees. Like most players, I use tape to hold my shin guards in place, just below the knees and just above the ankles. Don't tape too tightly or you'll cut off the circulation in your legs. Tape just tight enough to hold your shin guards snugly in place during the action of a game.
I like to put on my skates before I put on my pants. It's much easier to tie up my skates that way. I like my skates to feel definitely tight. And I like my blades to be as sharp as possible at all times. I sharpen mine before every game. For better turning, I like to have them rockered with very little blade touching the ice. I said all your equipment's important, but none of it's more important than your skates. Make sure you take care of them, protect the blades, watch out for nicks, and make sure you dry your blades after every time you skate. One other thing, I like to have my skates stiffer in the ankle than most players. It helps me turn more quickly and sharply. After my skates, I put on my pants. Again, the fit's important. Inside your pants are all the pads that protect your tailbone, kidneys, hips, and your thighs. And you need that protection when you run into somebody like Dennis Potvin or he runs into you. Your shoulder pads protect more than your shoulders. They protect your collarbones, your upper chest, and back. And they also protect your upper arms. I add an extra pad for those accidental slashes and cross checks. You'll want all the protection you can get when a guy like Mark Messi decides he's going to eliminate you from the play. Ouch. Your elbow pads protect the joint and also your arms from the bottom of your shoulder pads to the top of your gloves. Watch Phil Russell's elbow pads protect him from the glass. Next, I put on my oiler sweater and I'm just about ready to play. I wear a helmet in games. But for this video, I won't be wearing a helmet. But you kids remember to wear your visors and helmets at all times. I like my gloves to be protective and flexible, and for the palm to be soft, so I have a good feel for my stick. Now that we're fully dressed, let's go have some fun and play some hockey. If you're just getting started, here's something you can do on or off the ice to get the feel of your edges. First, you get into a proper hockey stance, like Brent's. Stand with your feet about shoulder width apart. Your toes point forward. Your weight's balanced on the balls of your feet, not on your toes. Your knees are well bent. Your back straight. Your head's up. Now get the feel of your edges. Inside. Outside. Inside. Outside. Inside. Outside. Skating's different from walking or running. When you skate, your weight isn't on your toes, it's on the balls of your feet. And you don't push back with your legs in skates, you push to the side. Your body's balanced, head is up, knees are always slightly bent. The power comes from your thighs and from digging in with those inside edges. You push up one leg, then the other. Your upper body relaxed, arms swinging freely. Every player has his own style, some skate upright. I skate crossed over, but the basics of good, strong skating are the same for everybody. The good skaters are all fast and strong on their skates. Let's look at three of the best. Smith, puck is loose to center. Coffee and Smith, two on one. Coffee, seven two on one. Paul Coffee, in one word, smooth. Maybe the smoothest, easiest skater in the NHL. He has tremendous speed and great acceleration. But he's such a free flowing skater, he never seems to be working hard. No wasted motion, he just flies. Goals in one point. Here's Gretzky to Mark Messier in full flight as he hits center, going wide. Mark Messier, the word for him is power. He's so strong, simply overpowers people. He's like an express train when he gets going, and he has that quick, hard shot. It's three two others as Gwen Anderson carries it across the line. Couple of nifty moves, still has it, goes right in. Keane's got his pad on. Glenn Anderson, the word here is agility. He never stops moving and he makes things happen. Maybe the toughest player to knock off his feet. Tremendous balance. We've just had an opportunity to watch some of the greatest skaters in the National Hockey League. Now Brent and I are going to show you one more important aspect of skating, right? That's your basic stop. Now Brent's going to show us a few different ways of stopping. Here's one way to stop, and probably the easiest, the snowplow. Both skates on the ice, his weight evenly balanced. He puts equal pressure on both inside edges and stops. In slow motion, he's balanced, and he applies pressure to his inside edges. Unfortunately, he cheats to the left side. Remember, equal pressure. Now here's a one-foot stop on your outside edge. 
See how Brent's left shoulder and hip come forward, and he presses hard on his right outside edge. Again, he turns his body and presses hard to stop on the outside edge of his skate. Now, the hockey stop, using the inside edge of his left skate and the outside edge of his right skate. See how he brings his hip and shoulder forward and ends up with his weight on his right skate. That's the hockey stop. I skated in circles a lot when I was a kid, with and without a puck, first turning one way, then the other. As hockey players, we're all stronger one way, to our right or to our left. So practice more on your weaker direction. It'll help improve your game. Before we learn crossovers, we should look at the basic glide turn. Turning to the left like this, you drop your left shoulder. You lean to the left, you dig in with the outside edge of your left skate. You bend your left leg, your right leg, and your body just follow. By crossing one foot over the other, you will pick up speed on a turn. So you dig in with the outside edge of your inside skate. Then push off the inside edge of your outside skate and cross that foot over. This is one of my dad's favorite drills to improve your agility on skates. Starting at the boards, you do crossovers along the blue line, left over right, left over right, trying to keep your upper body balanced, your shoulders square and under control. Now here's Brent going the other way, right over left. Watch now, he's turning his body, he's finding it difficult keeping his feet facing forward. Watch his feet turn. He's not really doing crossovers, he wants to turn his body. Make sure you keep your feet facing forward. No one said it was going to be easy. But, if you practice and get good at it, you can show off and throw in a few fancy steps. We've seen some basic skating drills to help your skating and to help your turning. But remember, without the puck and without the stick, you can't play hockey. So every now and then, pick up the stick and pick up a puck and have some fun. We've talked about how important skating is, and we've discussed some of the very important ingredients to becoming a good skater. Especially forward skating, being on the balls of your feet, balance, making sure you're in a proper hockey stance. Now we should get into some backward skating, especially for... Oh, Kevin, how are you? What are you doing here? Well, I heard you had a video. I thought I'd pop in and see how it was going. Oh, good, good. I just started to talk about some backward skating, and you being a great defenseman, uh, maybe you have some drills for these young defensemen out here. Well, Wayne, as a matter of fact, I do have some drills that I'd love to help out. It'd be my pleasure. Great. Kevin Lowe of the Edmonton Oilers is going to help out you kids and uh, with some drills, so I'll let him take over. You know, a defenseman spends probably half his game skating backwards, so he's got to be able to do it well. Here's Brent with a good backwards snowplow stop, but he's doing something wrong. It's a mistake a lot of young hockey players make. Brent, I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't skate backwards like that. If a forward's coming down and you're one-on-one, -on -one, and you're moving your arms around like this in an erratic fashion, you're leaving yourself wide open for a forward to blow by you. Like that? Get out of here. You want to be as much under control as possible when you're skating backwards. Now Brent's doing it right. He's balanced on his skates and he's ready to go either way. Now back the other way. His knees should be bent a little bit more, but his shoulders are nice and square and he's under control. Let's look at it again. All that arm action on the left shifts his center of gravity from side to side. On the right, he's nicely on balance. Now here's a good drill for defensemen. You skate to the blue line and stop. Back pedal to the far blue line and pivot to the boards, skating into the corner. You stop, take off forwards to the blue line, pivot again, and backwards to the far blue line, snow plow stop, and you take off forward to the other blue line. In a game, a defenseman has to make all these moves. Forwards, stop, backwards, pivot, turn, and so on. And this drill emphasizes all those points, always remembering that you should do these drills at top speed. You know, it's vital for a defenseman to skate as well as a forward. In practice, I try to skate backwards as much as possible and to practice pivoting both ways. Even as a professional, you have to keep working on your weaker side if you want to improve. I'm like Wayne. I like to have my skates as sharp as possible for all the turning and stopping, especially in the corners. Here's a great agility drill. Take off at full speed and do a full 360 at one line, then another 360 at the next line. You gotta keep practicing till you can do them both ways. 
Now, here goes Brent. Hey, he's pretty good. In fact, he's very good. Nice going, Brent. And now, your dad, Walter Gretzky, is going to put us all through another agility drill. Okay, I want you uh, fellas to move on the command of my stick. When I move it back, you move back. When I Before move it hockey way, can be enjoyable, left, right, you've got to know way. the basics. As my dad illustrates in this drill, I was fortunate okay, to have my dad as my back. first teacher. He made the game simple, and he made the game fun. As you can see, he also taught me the importance of hard work. I owe a large part of whatever success I've achieved to my dad, Walter Gretzky. Skating, both frontwards and backwards, as you have seen, is very important in being a good hockey player. Remember, work on some of the basic fundamentals that we've gone over. But remember also, you don't have to be a pretty skater to be a good skater. Skating is basic to hockey, so let's look again at some of the important points. Learning to use your inside and outside edges. The stride, your weight on the balls of your feet, your legs and skates pushing to the side. Stopping, good body control, and using your edges to dig into the ice. Turning, a gliding turn when there's time, but usually in hockey, a crossover turn to maintain your speed. Remember, practice both directions. Speed and balance are what all the best skaters have in common, plus agility. The best can do anything on skates, they can on foot, and more. A defenseman must be able to skate as well as a forward. He plays half his game skating backwards. He must be able to shift easily from backwards to forwards and back again. He must master all his stops, pivots, and turns. A tip from both Kevin and me, practice working to correct your weaknesses as a skater. Skating's the single most important skill you need to play hockey at any level. A player who's a poor skater will hardly ever make it to the National Hockey League. When we talked about our hockey equipment, we purposely left out the hockey stick. Along with the skates, I feel that the hockey stick is our most important piece. Now every guy has his own style and likeness to a hockey stick. Some guys like it long, short, other guys like it heavy or light. But we all have one thing in common, we all have to have a stick. Now a few things that I like in a hockey stick uh, that are a little different maybe. I like to have a little bit wider paddle than most players are using in the NHL. I like my hands to be able to roll on the hockey stick so I like the, the stick to be rounded and shaved a little bit more. I don't use a particularly long stick. I use it all about that high and, and it feels comfortable for my, my shooting and for my puck handling. But one thing that I have to have on a hockey stick, I like it to be stiff and heavy which a lot of guys find a little strange but I can find that I can control the puck better when I'm shooting with a, with a stiffer hockey stick. Man advantage as a result of all that. Here's a steal and Gretzky comes across the line. Less than a minute remaining. Gretzky walks it, shoots and scores! And again, a two-on-one doesn't work as Yerry Curry limps to the bench. Wayne Gretzky moves up. Gretzky circling. No teammates with him. Here's a clinic by 99. And Gretzky comes back. Zuman and heads for the net. Gretzky goes back to the line as we said he often does. Puts it through Boisel's legs. Look at Gretzky. Rolls it in front of Only for a second. Here's Gretzky. Going for the net is Krushelniski. Kretzky holds on and shoots it in. One simple reason that some kids aren't good puck handlers is because they use the wrong lie stick. Now kids who are going to skate standing up use a higher lie. And for the guys who are going to skate crouched down like I do, use a lower lie. You want to have as much of the stick as you can on the ice. Now here's a simple drill that we'll work on. Taking the stick going forehand to backhand. Rolling your hands all the time. Turning the blade of your stick over to cup the puck and nest it right in. It's an easy drill that you can work on all day long by yourself and improve your puck handling abilities 100%. Here's a great drill for improving your puck handling. And it's something you can practice by yourself. You skate figure eights around the face-off circles with the puck. Learning how to handle it and control it. And getting the feel of it on your stick. Practice keeping your head up so you can keep your eye on the opposing players and the puck. 
and try to keep the puck in front of you at all times. We're not all good puck handlers at the beginning, but practice and gradually you'll improve. Now let's move to another good stick handling drill using pylons. I find that this drill here is the easiest drill to improve your puck handling. There's a lot of guys that grow up not working on their puck handling abilities. Therefore, aren't great puck handlers. Kids can work on this drill hours at a time. Remember, keep your head up all the time. You don't have to hold on your hockey stick really strong. Just hold on to it lightly and soft. Roll your stick with each, with each pattern of the puck. Outside to inside. I, I think if kids work on this, the puck can improve tremendously. It's the opportunity. With a wide open net in front of him, Gretzky hits the post. He shows great determination and this time finds the net. Gretzky ties a playoff record with seven points. Nice setup by Mark Messier. And boy, Anderson is just a magician with the puck. Look at him. Great speed. He almost comes to a dead stop right there. Goes to the Some of the best puck handlers in the National Hockey League not only handle the puck well with their sticks, but they also know how to use their feet to their advantage. Now here's a little drill that will help you improve your handling of the puck with your feet. Just work on it now and then when you've got some spare time. And you never know when your feet are going to come in handy. My dad always says, your feet are like another pair of hands, and if you know how to use them, you're a better hockey player. People think you have to move your hockey stick to be good at faking, but the most important part is moving your shoulders and your head. You always try to make the defender make the first move. Don't telegraph what you want to do, and remember, it's harder to hit a moving target than a target that's standing still. Getting set. In the slot, Gretzky, fake, shoot, score! What a, what a, what a, what a goal! Gretzky's oh, high oh, the way! Fakes, shoot, score! It's dumped down the ice, Gretzky catching up with it, Messier trying to get involved, and across the line, Gretzky with the shot, score! Picked up there for Gretzky, he's got a breakaway, Gretzky going in, he scores! The most important things in puck handling are to have a feel for the puck, to work on developing soft hands, and remember, keep your head up. I stick handle less than people think I do. I like to move the puck and chase it, so only stick handle when it's necessary. Don't waste time if you have open ice. The important thing is to keep moving when you have the puck. Don't get caught standing still. Work on handling the puck with your skates. Every skill you can develop will make you a better hockey player. Never say you can't do something, work at it and never let them know what you want to do. Use your head and your shoulders to fake people and make them make the first move. One of the most exciting things about playing on the Edmonton Oilers is being able to watch all the exceptional passing. Now, everybody has to start from the basics. So we're going to go over some passing drills. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the fundamentals in passing. We'll start off with the three basic passes. The forward pass, the backhand pass, and the saucer pass. So we'll start off with the forehand pass. With your hand being comfortable down, down the hockey stick, down the shaft of your stick. Turning to the side so you're standing sideways when you make the pass. Bringing the puck back and gu guiding the puck, not slapping the puck. Now, one other important element is taking a pass. You don't want the puck to slide off your hockey stick by keeping your stick there. When the puck comes, you cushion the puck with the, with the stick. Therefore, the puck doesn't go off the end of your stick. Passing is the quickest way of moving the puck forward, much faster than carrying it. So you can't work too much on the fundamentals. Your head's up, your eyes are on your target. You tilt the blade of your stick slightly over the puck and you follow through. Receiving a pass, you try to take it squarely on your stick. Give with the puck and tilt the blade of your stick to cradle it. Dave Hunter to Wayne Gretzky looking for his fourth goal to Curry scores! Just wide and now Gretzky 
Kowalski, top of the circle, right in front. Here's Curry, score! Anderson. The Curry. Back to Anderson. To Gretzky. To Curry. Shoot, scores! The backhand pass is just the same as the forehand. Head up, eyes on your target, cradle the puck, snap your wrists, and follow through. Taking a pass backhand, again you want to take it squarely on your stick. Give with the puck and cradle it with your stick. The best players know how to get open for a pass. They know how to play without the puck. Our rule on the Oilers is, keep moving. Find an opening and go for the net, looking for a pass. Players who can get open, make the passing game go. Now we're going to work on the saucer pass or flip pass. Sometimes you have to use it because there's a man between you and your teammate. You give the puck a little flip with your wrist to lift the puck over the stick, and you follow through a little more. The saucer pass is a good pass in the other team's zone, but it's not a good pass in your own end of the ice because if you make a mistake, the man in between you can intercept it. Transition by the orders. Gretzky on the left side, Curry right and shoot scores! And he gets the puck here from Gretzky. Atkins going to do his best to try and get back. He can't catch him, and it's just a good overall. Coffee coming up, it's a two-on-one, McTavish trailing. Gretzky to Coffee knocks it down, oh. scores! Oh. <laughs> what a play! When your target's moving, you have to judge his speed and pass the point in front of his stick. Lead him and pass to where he's going to be. It's better to lead him too much than not enough. It's easier to speed up to take a pass than it is to slow down or to reach back for it. Let's look at the basics of passing one more time. Your head's up, your eyes are on your target, and you follow through. Taking a pass, your stick is square. You give with the puck, and you cradle it on your stick. The backhand pass is just the same. See your target, snap your wrists, and follow through. Give with the puck, and cradle it on your stick. The saucer pass is just a little flip of the wrist. Try to get the puck to land flat. Follow through a little more than normal. Lead the man who's on the move. Pass to where he's going to be. Equally important, keep moving to get open yourself. You know, goal scoring can be a lot of fun. But to be a good goal scorer, you have to be able to shoot well. So over the next few minutes, we're going to take some time to learn three basic shots. The wrist shot, backhand, and of course the slap shot. So come on, let's have some fun. You don't have to have a hard shot to score goals. Accuracy is far more important than speed. If you can shoot the puck where you want to shoot the puck, it's a lot better than shooting the puck hard and not know where it's going. Shooting the puck is very similar to throwing a baseball. You want to make sure your body is always sideways. Try to make sure your body moves with the shot, transferring the weight from the back foot to the front. The power comes from your entire body, not just your forearms. The follow through of the stick determines the height of the puck. And remember, when you shoot the puck, snap your wrist as hard as you can. to Curry. Huddy shot. Whatever made the save. Gretzky with the puck. Shot scores. Wayne Gretzky. Meet Graham Harvey, a promising young junior goaltender who's going to help us out with the video. Thanks for coming, Graham. It's great to be here, Wayne. All right. When you get to the NHL, all the goalies are good. Some of them have a little different style, but you're facing good goaltenders every game. You have to beat them. 
you have a lot better chance of beating them if you have a good backhand. A lot of players don't. Maybe because the curve stick or because they don't work on it. Thank goodness for Gordie Howe. His advice to me when I was 11 was to work on my backhand and I've scored a lot of goals with it. The backhand is very similar to the wrist shot. It's very important to always stand sideways. Transfer your weight from the back foot to the front foot. Just watch. The speed of the shot comes from your entire body, not just your arms. And the height of the follow through determines the height of the shot. I find with a smaller curve, I have a much better backhand. And I recommend to you kids to use a smaller curve because a good backhand will only help your game. The corner for Curry. This is where they become very dangerous. It's Gretzky scores! Up the middle. And he kicks off the skate, but Gretzky picks it up. Backhand is He is on the edge. This may be the first time that Gretzky has the puck on a breakaway. And hand Gretzky lost sight of it for a second. Gretzky looking for Bobby and Brett Barry. Yes. scores! 55 seconds to play, third period. Here's a chance, Gretzky! Backhand or forehand, you always try to make the goaltender make the first move. Let him unwind himself and get out of position, then shoot for the open space. The slap shot is the hardest shot for the shooter to control. You have to take your eyes off your target to line up the puck. You don't need a real big windup, and just blasting the puck isn't the answer. I suggest to you kids, learn the wrist shot and backhand first. The slap shot is not unlike the wrist shot or the backhand. Your weight is on your back foot and you transfer your weight to your front foot. The power of the shot comes from your entire body. And again, the height of the shot is determined by the height of the follow through. Semenko serving it. Here's Gretzky. Slot shot scores. So here comes Gretzky with Curry two on one. A slot shot scores. His twentieth of the season. Face off. He looks there. See him looking, and then he simply unloads. Barrett is just. Every time you see Wayne Gretzky take the slot shot, the goaltender can think high on the glove side. He take a. He took a real good look before he took the shot. Always shoot the puck hard and on the net. Remember, you won't score on 100% of the shots you don't take. A lot of goals are scored on deflections that redirect the puck into the net. Your shot from the blue line should be low and accurate. Then, the forward near the net has a good chance to redirect it and beat the goalie. Back to Curry at the point. His shot deflected by Gretzky, scores! In the last three games, here's Coffey waiting. Shoots, scores as Curry deflects. It simply cuts right in front, gets a little deflection. Just enough controlled off the face on right there. Anderson all alone because he doesn't go in there. Some of these power plays out in front. There's a shot, they score. As the Edmonton Oilers controlled it, slides it into the net. And there you see Curry takes a look. He times it perfectly. Gretzky comes in. Look at the tricky little deflection. Most goals are scored because somebody shoots the puck. So shooting is something to practice. With the wrist shot or any shot, always shoot at a definite target. Practice shooting from different angles and distances. Try to shoot with as little wind-up as possible. Your best chance of scoring is to surprise the goalie. Work hard on your backhand. It can really be effective. Lean hard in the direction of your shot and control the height of your shot with the height of your follow through. Not many players have a really good backhand, but I've scored a lot of important goals with mine. It's invaluable when you're one-on-one -on -one with a goaltender. Work on your slap shot too, but remember that quickness and accuracy are more important than a big windup and just blasting away. Shoot to score. Shooting from the point, keeping the puck low and accurate. Your chances of a deflection are much better. Deflections can mean goals, and goals are what it's all about. My job is to score goals, so I want the puck. Kevin's job is to stop goals with his checking.
The puck can't score by itself. In a one-on-one, -on -one, I play the man and the puck is secondary. I poke check the puck, but I stay with the man. You want to be able to go either way. Always let the skater make the first move. You extend your stick only from the elbow. You watch his stomach, not his fakes, because he's going to go where his stomach goes. And you stay with him. The sweep check does two things. You want to prevent a pass, and you want to knock the puck off his stick. In games, you often use this check on a man coming around the net. The lift check is a good way to steal the puck. You get in good position, under control. Then you lift his stick, and you've got it. Timing's important, as it is in all checking. But you can use this lift check anywhere on the ice. When using the press check, angle the player to the boards. Use your stick to keep his off the puck and your body to ride him off. It's a good check for both forwards and defensemen. Well, we're finally at my favorite part, body checking. Right, Kevin? Checking? Of course, you have a tough enough time checking your luggage. <laughs> I don't like airplanes anyway. Well, anyway, people think that I never get hit. Watch a few of these collisions. Body checking is an essential part of pro hockey. Most body checks are angling off checks along the boards. You give your man no place to go except down the boards, and then you eliminate him. You want to use both your shoulder and your hip to maximize the crunch of the body and to take him out of the play. The open ice hit is all a timing thing, and usually you have to catch your man off guard. But when you do, it's worth it. A great feeling, but not for him. Let's review checking. The poke check. You knock away the puck, but stay with your man. The sweep check. You want to stop the pass and knock away the puck. The lift check. You simply lift the stick and take the puck away from him. The press check. You neutralize the stick with yours and ride him off. Angry the man off, you force him along the boards and use enough body to stop him. The open ice hit. Keep your elbows down, set yourself, and unload. Face-offs. Face-offs are a very important part of the game in all three zones. Offense, neutral, and defense. But the one thing they have in common, you want to control the puck on all parts of the ice. There's different ways of taking face-offs. You can use your strength, you can use your power, and you can use your quickness. But one thing they all have in common is concentration. Concentration, I feel, is the biggest part of face-offs. Make sure you're watching the referee's hand at all times and try to get the jump on the other player. Move back. Well, a few of the Oilers have nagging injuries, but they're playing it again! <laughs> I mean, there's excitement at its best, folks. But Gretzky right from the draw. <laughs> now some fun. Some one-on-one -on -one in the face-off circle. You gotta enjoy the game and you gotta have some fun mixed in with your hard work. Too old. This drill is good for most aspects of your game. Stick handling, checking, skating, and balance. So it's a good drill, but it's also really a fun drill.
Hockey is definitely a team game. Here's Paul Coffey on the move at center ice. Watch how his speed helps create the play. He gets the puck to me at the blue line, then keeps coming. I move into the middle, and Paul goes wide to the right side. Dave Hunter is wide on the left side, and this creates a three on two. The two defensemen stay wide to cover our wide men. I'm able to move in and get off a good slap shot. In slow motion, watch how Paul feeds me the puck, then crosses behind me as I move into the middle. The defensemen don't force me because of Coffey on my right and Hunter on my left, both going for the net. One more time. I'm able to hold my shot until the goalie starts to move. Here we are on a three-on-one. Ray Bork's the lone defenseman back for Boston. You should really always score on a three-on-one. Glenn Anderson has the puck. I'm on his left. Dave Lumley is coming up the middle, getting into the play. Bork tries to play it as well as he can, but he's just overwhelmed. Watch how Glenn fakes the shot, then gets a nice little saucer pass over to me for an easy goal. Here's an example of speed and strength and what they can do. Mark Messi and Charlie Huddy on a two on two. Mark decides to go wide around the defenseman. Charlie will move across the blue line into the slot for a pass. Mark takes his defenseman wide with his speed, but Mark decides to shoot anyway and scores. You won't see a better slap shot than this. He's so strong, he tees it up and simply overpowers the goaltender. Messi in full flight, and that terrific low shot for the goal. This play is a good example of how speed turns a one-on-one -on -one into a two-on-one. -on I come across the blue line with the puck on my forehand, and I slow down because I see Yara Curry has broken away from his check and is going hard for the net. Now, we're two on one. I wait, a little saucer pass over the defenseman stick, and it's in the net. Watch as I wait until the defenseman makes the first move, and then flip it over to Yeri. There's nobody who one times the puck better than Yeri. It's fun to play with him. My goal wasn't to play in the National Hockey League, it was my dream. We grew up playing hockey as Canadians, and we play every day. And we play ball hockey or street hockey. And everybody dreams about playing in the NHL and being Guy Lafleur or Gordie Howe, and it's fun, and it's part of growing up. Hockey's still fun, it's a game, but there are only about 400 players in the NHL. And how many thousands of people who play hockey? Playing hockey is something I feel very fortunate that I get paid to do, and I make my living at it. But you gotta remember, when you leave that rink, there are other things in life. You've got the rest of your life to live away from hockey. You've got your family and your friends. I'm no different than anybody else. I'm human and I'm happy. I'm proud of what I've done. I have to have pride in life. You've got to be proud of what you do and who you are. You've got to be proud to be an Edmonton Oiler. You've got to be proud to play in the NHL. You've got to be proud to be alive and be part of your family. I have to be Wayne Gretzky and be myself. The way that my parents raised me, that's all I can answer to. I prepare for every game the same way, whether it's an exhibition game in September or a big game in January. I don't take any game lightly. And my philosophy is, if you're winning 2-1 to one or 8-1, to one, you keep going. 
to start preparing the night before, making sure you have a proper meal and proper rest. Thinking about the game during the day, respecting the people you play against and the people you play with, learning from them and your teammates. I like to become a better player every game I play. I don't worry about pressure. I just have to play the game the way I was taught to play it and the way the coaching staff wants me to play. I play every game as hard as I did the previous game. I think if you take care of each shift, each period, and each game, all the goals and records just fall into place. So the important thing is to play each shift as hard as you can. I know that as an NHL player, you have a responsibility to yourself, to your teammates, and to the fans. I don't feel the pressure when I step on the ice because I'm just doing what I love to do. I forget about everything else and just play the game and enjoy it. That's when I feel most comfortable and that's when I'm relaxed. And my instincts just take over. It's a great sport and it's fun to be able to do something for a living that you love to do. You're not in the NHL because you're a nice guy. You're there because you're a hockey player. And you've got to remember that or you won't be there. But the game has always been fun for me, whether I played in my backyard, the Edmonton Coliseum, or Maple Leaf Gardens. And it's a lot more fun when you win. So you kids, if you don't enjoy it, then don't do it. If it's not fun, then don't play. Whether you play minor hockey or in the NHL, we all have superstitions. I like to put baby powder on my stick, and of course, I like to tuck my sweater in on the right side. People ask me about my sweater an awful lot and why I tuck it in, but it's just a superstition. I smile more now when I score a goal than I did five years ago. You never get tired of that. I hope you've enjoyed the last hour. A special thanks to my brother Brent, to Graham Harvey, and my good friend Kevin Lowe. I hope you've enjoyed hockey my way. And one day maybe someone can break my records. But remember, while playing hockey, have fun your way. For a second, here's Gretzky. Going for the net is Krzyzewski. Gretzky holds on and shoots it in. What a play! And Gretzky's two-on-one with Semenko. Sheehy back. Gretzky big shoot scores!